If you've been keeping up with the recent cybersecurity news within the last month or so, you probably have seen the recent revelations and shortcomings of a very popular password manager tool used by enterprises and consumers like myself. Password managers have been recommended by security experts for years. Now, with all of this recent security news, uh, you know, people have been thinking about the viability and the security shortcomings of password managers, and really, are they still recommended? In this video, I will briefly overview the security shortcomings of the LastPass data breach, why I still think that password managers will be recommended, and some strategies you can use. Now, a quick word before getting started. I am not here to publicly shame a company on a data breach. It literally can happen to the best of us. I think this serves as an opportunity for the security industry to come together and architect a solution um, that is going to be more safe and secure moving forward, as well as more open and transparent. I am by no means a cryptography expert. Uh, this video is a compiled list of resources that I've researched. All the resources and links will be in the description below for further reading. So let's go ahead and get on with what the heck is going on with these password managers. So recently, the market leader in password manager tools, LastPass, has been in the security news. And in in fact, they've been in the security news for several months now. And to keep this video short, I'm not going to go through the exact timeline. If you're looking for a detailed breakdown, I will uh, recommend the Security Now podcast episodes 904, 905, and 906, which will be in the description below. The TLDR of this story is that LastPass came out in late December of 2022 and claimed that hackers were able to copy a backup of customer vault data meaning that they theoretically had access to all customer vault data. If they had cracked the vault, then they had access to all consumer passwords. Now, if you had a strong master password and you had LastPass's most uh, recent security default settings, you would be good, uh, but this isn't necessarily fully true. LastPass's entire business model has been to keep all of your passwords safe. All you need to do is remember one password. Now, the issue isn't necessarily with this master password, it's those default security settings and the lack of notification and transparency to the consumers. For longtime users of LastPass, the security default settings were considered to be insecure. And the brief breakdown of this is that the PBKDF2 hashing algorithm was set to one or 5,000 iterations on old LastPass user accounts. Default recommended iterations by the OSOP Foundation has been recently changed to 600,000 plus for the PBKDF2 algorithm. Outdated modes of encryption were used, electronic codebook to be exact, and legacy customers still had that enabled. Um, for new users, they had the newer CBC mode or cipher blockchaining. And also, finally, although the passwords were encrypted into this vault, um, other information such as the URL and other metadata about those users or their vault information was not encrypted. So yeah, that's not great. So here's the problem that I think I've come to realize while I've followed along in this story so far. Having a proprietary password manager uh, without regular security audits, outsourced security testing, and really transparency into their entire encryption model is really hard to trust. You can't really see what's going on underneath. And this can really be said of any proprietary software made today. Blindly trusting a security tool or software uh, will possibly jeopardize the users if they don't know what's going on underneath. The security default settings of LastPass were negligent, in my opinion, and in the many opinions of security experts. But I think another huge issue in this entire story is that how the response was articulated. Unfortunately, all of these announcements were released like a few days before the American United States holidays. Information was withheld for several months. And I think that consumers needed to be aware of these default settings even before this data breach. And I, I think that that all really translated uh, into this whole story and mess of LastPass. With the shortcomings of this password manager and you know the recent security news, are password managers still recommended by security experts? I think a lot of them would still say yes, they are, but just with more caution moving forward. There are a few key points consumers can think about when moving forward. Number one is password management companies need to have more of an open model when it comes to their design. Uh, I think letting consumers in the mass public look under the hood of their encryption model is important and understanding the details and holding them accountable. I think that the solutions uh, and, and architecture behind password management tools 
should already assume a data breach on the cloud side. So if they are hosting your passwords, they need to assume that a data breach has happened. And I think for us consumers, what we can learn from all this is that we need to eliminate single point of failure. With this information in mind, what password management tool do you use? Everyone's gonna tell you and recommend a certain tool. And really, they're all, they can be viable, but uh, the first piece of advice I'd recommend is go out to the website, look at the password management tools, look at their design, see how open they are about their encryption model and what they are doing, uh, and formulate your opinion from there. If we learn something about the last best data breach, it might be that proprietary software is weak and that it shields the broader community from verifying its proper implementation and any possible security weaknesses. Especially for something as sensitive as storing a database full of passwords, I do think that it would be important to have a full set of eyes on its implementation. And this is why I probably do recommend an open source password manager tool. The open source model provides a lot of flexibility for its user base. For example, popular open source password managers provide the option to self-host password vaults. With an open source model, anyone has access to the source code and security experts are able to identify and verify its proper implementation. And even when that implementation is poorly executed, such as the recent issue with Bitwarden, where it was discovered that the server-side 100,000 pbkdf2 hashes were effectively useless, um, the community is able to highlight these issues and build a better solution moving forward. I also recommend looking into a password manager which provides memory-hardened password hashing algorithm options, so algorithms such as Argon2 provide effective defense against GPU-based rainbow tables. And finally, I do recommend looking into a password management solution, which provides maybe a free and paid option. It's great not to have to pay for your password management vault storage, but I also think that you get what you pay for. Everyone will recommend a different password management tool and really just choose whichever one you think is the best and most recommended. I recommend following this criteria when choosing your next password management tool. So what are your thoughts on this whole LastPass data breach? What, what are some things that are going through your mind? And well, yes, until the next video, have a good day.